What's up, everybody, and welcome to ITG Daily, the show that brings you the hottest in gaming news. I'm Drew Bosley, and that's Scott Savage. Scott, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, take the breath. I thought you were going to hit me with the <laughs> wrestling intro. <laughs> Ah, maybe tomorrow. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Dude, what's happening? I gotta get you with the EA Sports voice now. Ah, uh, there you go. Dude, that's EA just legendary. EA Sports. Yeah, it's not... I'm never gonna be as good, but... <laughs> it's there. It's good. You know what's good? When people join us live noon Eastern over on twitch.tv slash the official ITG, as well as youtube.com slash the official ITG. But if you can't join us live, hit us up later inside the game.ca podcast services, TV streaming networks around the globe. Dude, today's show is a hot one. I'm pumped. IO Interactive says their next major installment in the Hitman franchise is on a bit of a hiatus. We'll talk about why that is. Mm. Silent Hill 2 Remake Studio wants to be the horror game studio. And a new Switch doesn't sound like it's coming anytime soon. Scott, why? <laughs> why? What do you mean? What? Uh, uh, they come they on. just don't. They just don't have to. Oh, well, dude, you know, I disagree. But, you know. <laughs> a lot of us, oh, dude, we, we, uh, <laughs> there's <laughs> a lot of us disagree. Dude, let's get going. I want to talk about it. IO Interactive says the next major Hitman game is a little bit on hiatus. Tom Ivan or VGC had this to say IO Interactive, dude, one of my favorite franchises or studios. I tell you, I love IO and I'm so happy for the studio. I'm so glad they're no longer with Square Enix. We're able to take the Hitman franchise and then just move away. And it's <laughs> all paying off beautifully. Dude, I absolutely love it. IO Interactive has told Hitman fans not to expect the next entry in the franchise anytime soon. <laughs> While the studio plans to continue evolving its World of Assassination trilogy, it appears to have shifted its primary focus to its upcoming James Bond project. That is what I expected. Dude, at That's this the one point, that has me excited ah, at this well, point now. Well, with good reason. Dude, with very good reason, I think, too, right? There's a lot going on right now. Um, if you are keeping up to date with what I'm up to these days, yo, mm. Hitman <laughs> Freelance Mode is the game I'm playing day in day out going after one target after another i what am i at level 15 i'm somewhere around level did you 15. actually did you nail that last target i remember you were dude, up to it. i failed at the end too i was dragging a body and two guys came up behind me and i had no idea they were there i was like well <laughs> i tried to shoot my way out it when you get sworn by 50 guys <laughs> in him in doesn't normally end very well, I'll tell you. That much. No. That's for sure. So that's not from of, my memory. Not at all. But while the studio plans to continue evolving, we talked about that. In January, IO rebranded 2021's Hitman 3 as Hitman World of Assassination and incorporated content from Hitman 1, 2 into the complete package and then introducing Freelancer Wound, which is what I think has really kind of elevated this whole Hitman franchise. Because now, dude, you were literally traversing all of the hitman franchises from the reboot of right so from one so you're going to italy you're off now in berlin like dude there, there's every map here you just have a little mission over there and then a little mission over there and then another mission over here and as freelancer keeps progressing and you keep going along dude you had now you have three targets on this map then you have four targets and then you have the syndicate target yo Shout out to IO. Absolutely love what they've created. Sounds like they really nailed it. I played the very first two missions of my oh. setup and mm -hmm. failed very quickly. And that was it. I have not restarted. It, it's it's incredible. But they also have more in the works too. And IO has told Eurogamer that fans can expect further experimentation with the Hitman. With what Hitman can offer before the studio eventually begins to work on a new mainline series entry. Quote, we have such a wonderful platform where we can keep experimenting with the formula, can what the formula can do, and what people can, can expect of it, said IO, owner chief, uh, Christian Elverdam. And then at that point, at some point, obviously, as any creative, it would be nice to then go in and say, okay, well, with everything we've learned and what that would be, if we had to re-articulate uh, a sandbox, what would that look like? Basically getting into a new setup with Hitman. Dude, because over the trilogy, right? Between 1, 2, and 3, we saw Age of 47's story progress. And basically kind of come to a closing of a chapter. 
and that's kind of where it left off. So now do we have to kick up a whole new syndicate or like what's going on? I don't want to get into spoilers yeah. if nobody's played the, the final Hitman 3. I, I actually haven't beaten it yet. Well, you, 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 I watched my brother do up to the train shameful. and that was it. I stopped playing. Shameful. I stopped watching. I tell you, it's shameful, Scott. <laughs> um, it's so good. Dude, freelancer mode and whatever they're working on now. Here's the other thing too, right? Don't forget that IO is also working on, like we just talked about at the top of this, new James Bond game, right? New 007 game is going to be, it's in the works right now. That's where they're shifting their focus to, which makes, dude, an absolute ton of sense going from Hitman to 007, doesn't it? It does actually surprisingly similar. A lot of similarities there. I wonder. I'm what... trying to think of David Bates in, in a movie role. <laughs> Yo, shout out to David, friend of the show. Uh, yeah, it's it'd be. I'm interested to see how they transform what they've taken with the Hitman franchise and bring it over to the world of James Bond. So many new gadgets, so many other things to kind of look and and kind of the scope. Of course, we're back into then traversing the globe. So, like, a lot of familiar territory, I think, for IO. But at the same time, a new franchise. A little bit more pressure, I think, at some point, too, to get into the world of James Bond. And then on top of that, Scott, we just got rumblings, too, and word of that IO is working on a fantasy RPG game. Yeah, well, they're splitting in a lot of different directions now. Mm-hmm. It does make sense that we'll see Hitman kind of put on the back burner for now. True they want to seem to widen up their portfolio. No, absolutely. What has so, what has IO done besides before Hitman now? Dude, Getting before my time. It was really uh did they do Kane and Lynch? Oh is that who did Kane and Lynch? It it's been a while. Now you got me wondering. Who did Kane and Lynch? Do you remember that game? <laughs> I very, very faint memories. Who did that? It was Idos. Idos bunch or, yeah, Idos Interactive did that one. Okay. So do have they only done Hitman? I'm wondering. You really got me wondering because that would be quite nerve wracking then to step out of the bounds of your familiar brand. Oh, they helped with Kanye Lynch. Okay, I thought so. Okay, so that they're there, but it's really been heavily focused on the uh, Hitman franchise, right? Like it goes. This goes like years and years back, all the way back to yeah. my PC days. But yeah, it's. Been... Oh, I think they they struck gold what, 25 years ago or more. Yeah, and now it's just brought it to a whole other level. And then we're still going with Hitman today, which is exciting for me as a fan to see IO still continue on with one of my favorite franchises. And then now they're starting to branch out. That's why I said this RPG, which they've just put out that they're looking for help to kind of get into. So if you're looking for a job, maybe hit them up if you're in that realm and working on games. There could be a new avenue for you to take with IO. Um, and then the whole James Bond thing. Dude, they're, they're starting to get into other territories, branch out, more studios. I know, I just, I hope they don't go too big too fast. Right? Yeah. That's that's the big thing for me. Well, I'm now I'm wondering, have they ever had a miss? If we're going uh, mainly see, Hitman series, well... Kane and Lynch. Think, well, yeah, I guess that would be the least memorable out of all of them for myself, but... Yeah. A lot of people divisive on um, Absolution. Hitman Absolution. Oh, people, that's right. I, dude, I liked it. I personally had a ball. I, play. I forgot all about that controversy or <laughs> change in opinion because I liked it a lot and I don't really understand any of the complaints. Yeah, I know. I, I loved it. I thought it was a ton That was the one with the gun store level, right? Yep. Dude, and then oh, it had like so that, that mark and execute level too in the one where you leave the guy out in the desert. So you had to play it twice to get the <laughs> achievement or trophy, depending on what platform you played it on. You could either leave him alive or you just knock him dead and then they take off. Like it was just <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> Dude, why don't you take the next one? This is a U game. Silent Hill 2, a remake developer, wants to be the studio that defines the future of video game horror. I certainly bloody hope so. <laughs> For Silent Hill's two sake, says Kelsey Raynor at VG247. Following a recent interview with IGN, Bloober Team CEO, I think that's Peter Babino, talks all things horror and video games in lead up to the remake of cult classic Silent Hill 2. First founded in 2008, Bloober Team is a Polish developer best known for horror titles such as one of my favorites, Layers of Fear, (laughs) Blair Witch, and The Medium. Now the team is working alongside Konami to rejuvenate and remake one of the best horror games of all time, Silent Hill 2. There's one with foggy memories. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
At the Dice Summit 2023, <laughs> Peter Babineau tells IGN that he wants to move past the mechanics used in walking simulator games. Hey, now, again, one of my favorites. And to, to work on more complex and involved gameplay mechanics on the level of other giants in the horror genre. This is something Bloober Team's prior games have been criticized for, so it's positive to hear that the team is attempting to move away from that. More specifically, Babineau wants Bloober Team to be known as the studio that defines the future of video game horror. He follows it up with, quote, we, we, would still, sorry, we still would like to make meaningful games. We still would like to keep our DNA and tell stories about things which are important to us, end quote. Ultimately, it, it makes sense that Bloober Team would work on the remake of Silent Hill 2, given their experience working with psychological themes of horror and focus on atmosphere within prior games. That said, Bloober Team's prior work has been weak. <clears throat> Ooh. Both Layers of Fear and The Medium are your average mid-tier horror game. <laughs> They're interesting and immersive, showing plenty of promise, but ultimately lacking any actively enthralling gameplay. I have a lot of thoughts as a critic for I was that sentence. Gonna that say. <laughs> paragraph I just read. Hmm, you like the medium. Not entirely wrong. I did like the medium, yeah. yeah. But I understand what they're saying. A little bit of playing it safe. Sure. That's fair. What do you think, Scott? When, can they pull it off? Oh, I think they can. If there's any team that I wanted to be on Silent Hill 2, I think it is Bluebird. That's fair. That's fair. But can they be the next? Can they be the go-to horror team? Yeah, to take to take all that they've learned from this and then move on forward. I have I have big hopes for layer layers of fear. Yeah. Layers of fear too. Whatever sure. the title is on that one. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, I'm not a horror guy, so I'm out. Um, but I think what they've been able to achieve over the past is, is some incredible stuff, and then being able to move in and kind of form their own path is the biggest thing, right? And make a name for themselves to the point where Konami trusts them enough to take over for Silent Hill. I think that's the big get right there. If they can prove yeah. themselves with Silent Hill, then, dude, is there going to be anybody bigger when it comes to horror? Yeah, who even really competes? I, I can't draw another name. I'm just trying to think of, like, what's... Capcom, Resident Evil, like that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Right? But that's a tough I don't even regard those as horror games now, though, which is silly because seven and eight were the return to that. Yeah. So oh. seven did get me once, that's... I think. <laughs> Dude, you know what's gonna get me? Is Nintendo, as they're very bullish <laughs> on Switch, confident in quote strong performance over the next few years. Strong performance over the next few years still on the Switch? <laughs> Scott, the Switch. How old's the Switch? This is Brian over at Nintendo Everything. <laughs> in an interview with Associated Press, Nintendo of America President Doug Bowser, dude, legendary to get that, isn't he? <laughs> was asked about the Switch's successor and what he'd like to see. However, Bowser opted to discuss Nintendo's current system and why the company still believes Switch has a bright future ahead. <sighs> According to Bowser, <laughs> Switch sales remain, quote, strong, end quote, with, uh, with quote, a very strong lineup coming, end quote. While Nintendo has nothing to announce about the future, the company is still very bullish regarding its current platform. He added that, quote, one of the reasons that even going into year seven, we feel very confident that the Switch can have a strong performance over the next few years is that this still is truly a unique device that you can play in a variety of ways, at home and on the go, end quote. Scott... Mm -hmm. But I think the Steam Deck takes a bite out of that. The Steam Deck. I've got the Logitech G Cloud unit. Uh, I'm jealous of that still, by the way. <laughs> there's, there, there's more and more devices being developed that are coming around to take the reins away from Nintendo. The biggest thing Nintendo has going for it is obviously its IPs, right? The, the has, mm. you know, there's only one place you're going to get Mario, and it's on Nintendo. So this... well, that, that sums up both what I love and what I hate about <laughs> Nintendo is because yeah. they a, a seven year old console, dude, of course, that'll work because you're buying 30 year old games. That's the critique. And, and I feel that. But yeah. I feel that every time I line up with my hand in my wallet, ready uh, to pay it again. Right. It's uh, there's a little bit more to the article. Let's get let's finish this off. <laughs> 
But uh, as we enter the seventh year for the Nintendo Switch, sales are still strong. I think we can still have a very, very strong lineup coming. As Mr. What was that, Scott? For- Furukawa. Furukawa man said recently we're entering uncharted territory with the platform it's exciting to see the demand is still there so nothing to announce on any future console or device but we are still very feeling very bullish about the nintendo switch dude part of me is frustrated like i'm really (laughs) at this point just getting frustrated because i feel that we're getting left behind nintendo is getting left behind i get that they're they think they have a strong future but the ones really pulling away from everything is Sony and Microsoft with the PS5 and the Xbox Series X and S. They just put everything on a whole other level. When the Switch launched, it was already outdated. We're now seven years deep, and they think they're going to stick around for a few more. So this puts us at a decade long with this console, Scott. Are we going to be at a decade without a Switch 2? I'm, I'm very surprised to think that that is how it's going to play out. I really think they're going to, they're going to have to wait until development just is so held up so hamstrung and unable to push forward that they the developers are crying out for help please nintendo give us a better hardware to work with because a lot of these third-party developers are going to be lost left behind things aren't going to come to switch exactly people are going to start moving on dude tears of the kingdom is coming out this year i honestly thought this would be the last title to hit the switch and then we'll see a sequel apparently that's not the game playing here whatsoever it's hey Here's another game. Enjoy your Switch. <laughs> and that's kind of how it's at. As it, man, how many years left do we have in the Switch? Or are they... like? So we had the PS4. Dude, remember the PS4 and the Xbox One? That was a long life cycle. Like, it was very long. So for me, when we got in... Well, even at that point, though, at halfway through that generation, we saw the PS4 Pro and the Xbox I- One... X. That's about when I got right? the console. I stayed on 360 extra, extra long. So yeah. I had a, an artificially inflated gen, that console generation. I just can't see them sticking around for three more years without having a new console. Are the developers still going to want to put in another Metroid game on an old gen? When you take a yeah. look at where PS5 is and the Xbox Series X and S and go, dude, look how pretty and wonderful and how smooth our game could run. Instead, we're still fighting the way of the Switch. Mm. Right? Like, Are we going to see cloud service step up to kind of bridge the gap? Well, so well, maybe these games can run on more impressive hardware and be brought to you. And and that's, that's the other side of it, too. The next Switch, do you think it's Switch 2 or do you think it's like Switch Cloud? I think it's like Switch Cloud. I think think that's kind of what they're holding on to i think nintendo wants to hold on as long as they possibly can on this unit and then when they reinvent whatever the switch is going to be it actually knocks the socks off of everybody and go oh man this is where we're going this is where nintendo wants to take us next because when nintendo drops a console it's uh, as well as playstation has dropped new consoles it's always been play ps1 ps2 ps3 ps4 ps5 Nintendo, they're like, yo, here's the 64, here's the GameCube, here's the Wii, here's the Switch, here's the right. The, we're always and then the Wii U. And nobody talks about understand. that. <laughs> no, I just don't understand the suffix. I feel like there's maybe just it's not an English thing. <laughs> maybe, maybe they just want to move on to something oh. new, so they want to have a, a stopping a stomping power to kind of go with that, right? I think that's what we're holding on to here. We'll see what happens, but I'm just. Dude, I'm well, starving go cloud, for something new. If they're going to go cloud, they better tighten up the online service. That's really the only oh, thing to hold well, them back. Maybe that's the problem is, right? But Okay, so let's... It's still it's still 2012 <laughs> in Nintendo land. Oh, man. It certainly is. Uh, yeah. Call of Duty on, on the Switch, just it, to me, seems yeah. impossible. But, dude, let's get into it as the next article, because Osin has uh, some stuff to fill in for us over at VG247. As Sony thinks Starfield being on Xbox exclusive justifies why it's worried about Call of Duty. The battle mm. continues. Sony is pointing... To them, I, may, I, may I direct you to... Um insomniacs spider-man <laughs> right we could pull out the exclusives you want to keep going back and forth here playstation <laughs> sony is pointing to starfield as evidence that microsoft might not be entirely trustworthy when it comes to keeping call of duty multi-platform 
I'm just, Plus, I'm that's just, why there's legally binding agreements. Like, like, yeah, you're gonna have lawyers involved here. How much of an impact Call of Duty not being on PlayStation consoles will actually have is completely up in the air. But Sony is dead set on the idea that it will be catastrophic. Just last week, Sony suggested that Microsoft could release an unoptimized version of Call of Duty on PlayStation. Give me a break, PlayStation. That's not that's gonna happen. No, that's that's where it just falls into it. It's gone beyond cringe. <laughs> yeah. No, it certainly We're has. into whatever that is. Yeah. Now in a statement to the UK government's competition in Marcus Authority, Sony has used Starfield as evidence that Microsoft can't guarantee Call of Duty will be easily available on PlayStation. Thanks, Games Radar. In Sony's statement, it noted how Microsoft originally said, quote, it would not have the incentive to seize or limit making ZeniMax games available for purchase on rival consoles, end quote, when attempting to acquire ZeniMax Media and subsequently Bethesda. Well, they got a point there, Scott. This has obviously ended up not being so true, as Sony also noted that both Starfield and Elder Scrolls are also going to be Xbox console exclusives. I get where they're coming from, but dude, there is this there is, is different. something to highlight there, but yes, but Scott, what's the but, Scott? Break it well, down. This is Tell the, me about it. This is the most scrutinized acquisition in my memory. I, I can't say forever, but it certainly seems like one of the largest scrutinized acquisitions in all time. So you'd think both these companies must be employing a large percentage of the lawyers' market <laughs> right now. Surely they could come to an agreement. Isn't that their entire point? Well, Essentially. So, lawyers, that is. So the other thing, too, Scott, we heard last week is that Xbox offered day one to be on PlayStation Plus. Oh. So there's this side of the aspect as well, that not only are they guaranteeing you it's going to be there, but they're going to guarantee you it's their day one on your platform for free. Mm. for playstation plus members that is right so like you i don't know what else they can do i know at the end of the day playstation just goes i don't want this deal to happen and i can yeah. see why that is to some extent and where why they're trying to prevent it especially when you are like dude starfield's gonna be massive this year like it's gonna be a huge get sure for xbox so. yeah we all have fingers crossed we're hoping right <laughs> but we don't really know until it's here we'll find out but then at the other side of that too when we play in sony's court Dude, Spider-Man 2 is going to be a massive hit this year. Like, like Yeah. So, we're, we're coming out swinging, man. Like, this is a great year for games. Uh, if you're on both sides with Xbox and PlayStation, you're in a wonderful position to play some incredible <laughs> games this year. But on the other side of it, if you're on PlayStation only and you're worried about Call of Duty, you might be rightfully so when you think about Starfield and Elder Scrolls. If, dude, if you are looking for your next Skyrim and it's not on PlayStation, now what? Right? Yeah. You have that's to go. A very specific, that's a very specific flavor. You're going to have to follow Elder Scrolls wherever they go. But yeah, uh, it's so hard to, to say what will actually happen because they've brought this up. I'm wondering if they're going to have to switch Destiny. Okay, we'll trade you like a prisoner exchange. Oh, really? But right now, Destiny is multi-platform, right? It's been that way it because Benji, or Bungie just got acquired last year two years ago from playstation but at that point right it was already out there destiny's already been out there destiny one destiny two yeah and whatever bungie rolls into next with destiny destiny three maybe then i can jump back in because at this point i haven't got a clue what's going on in the I'm world of destiny two <laughs> i'm wondering so. if there ever is going to be a destiny three or if there's uh, just <laughs> this is the live service forever no uh, dude i think we'll get something i think something's there but scott there is something out today there are two games out today what do we have we have The Legend of Heroes, Trails of Azure, and that is on PlayStation 4, Xbox, no, sorry, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and PC, my mistake. The Wreck is on PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, XS, Nintendo Switch, and PC. And just like that, Scott, that's going to wrap up today's episode. Everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us. This has been ITG Daily, the show that brings you the hottest in gaming news. You can always join us live over on Twitch and YouTube. Otherwise, hit us up later inside the game.ca podcast services and TV streaming networks around the globe. Until tomorrow, everybody, I'm Drew. That's Scott. We'll see you inside the game.